Hello, I am Jeffrey Cohen. I am a neurologist at the Cleveland Clinic Mellon MS Center. There is a great deal of interest in stem cells as potential therapies for uh, multiple sclerosis. In this presentation, I will review uh, several approaches using stem cells that have been uh, considered uh, to treat multiple sclerosis. So the two general categories I'm going to address in this presentation are shown here. Uh, the first is as an anti-inflammatory therapy, uh, as it were, uh, 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 an approach that's similar to the, the approved medications we already have to treat relapsing MS. Uh, and then a, a second approach in which we attempt to uh, repair the damaged nervous system, uh, in, uh, specifically to repair the myelin, uh, one of the targets of the abnormal immune response in multiple sclerosis, either by directly replacing uh, the cells that form myelin or by, or by using one type of stem cell to provide support for the myelin forming stem cells. So let's start with uh, the first approach. Uh, so this is immunoablation followed by autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This has been characterized as rebooting the immune system. Uh, destroying the uh, damaged, malfunctioning immune system that causes MS, uh, and then replacing it with an immune system that hopefully uh, will be more normal. Uh, this approach has uh, several steps. Uh, first is uh, mobilization of the blood-forming stem cells from the bone marrow into the blood, so-called mobilization. Uh, those cells are then harvested and frozen. Uh, then uh, the patient receives uh, the conditioning regimen. This is typically high-dose chemotherapy, which destroys uh, the immune system. Uh, it also uh, uh, may destroy uh, other uh, aspects of the bone marrow, uh, and so to, to lessen potential side effects, the hematopoietic stem cells are reinfused to shorten the so-called aplastic phase. Then after recovery, it is hoped that the newly formed immune system uh, will uh, function more normally. So what is the current status uh, of this approach? There have been a number of, of clinical trials uh, that suggest that uh, immunoablation followed by autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation has very potent and durable benefit in relapsing multiple sclerosis. The people with MS that are most likely to benefit are those that are young with relatively recent uh, disease onset, uh, have mild to moderate disability, uh, but have highly active multiple sclerosis with recent clinical relapses or MRI lesion activity despite one, of the, one or more of the approved disease therapies. One of the drawbacks uh, is, is that this approach has substantial safety issues and is very expensive. But, but those concerns are mostly front-loaded, meaning that they occur at the time of the transplant. Uh, then, uh, once the, the patient recovers, uh, no additional therapy uh, may be needed. So there are several trials that now are either underway or under development to better define the role of this approach to treat uh, multiple sclerosis, specifically where it fits into our overall sequence of, of treatments. So let's, let's now turn to the other approach, uh, uh, trying to reform myelin. One approach that's been discussed has been to use uh, oligodendrocyte progenitor cells, the myelin-forming stem cells, uh, to uh, uh, reform the damaged myelin. That is one of the uh, uh, issues in multiple sclerosis. So this slide uh, sh shows on the left uh, the sequence of events as the uh, oligodendrocyte progenitor cells, the myelin-forming stem cells, develop into the oligodendrocytes. These are the cells that make myelin within the, the brain. There are several sources that could be uh, utilized for this approach, uh, but typically these cells are isolated from embryonic or fetal brain. They then are grown in culture uh, to promote the development of the myelin-forming oligodendrocytes. So this, this approach shows promise, but there are a number of, of issues that will need to be overcome. First of all, there are practical and, and ethical issues with using embryonic or fetal uh, tissue. Uh, only limited numbers of, of cells can be uh, obtained, uh, so it's going to require uh, multiple uh, uh, cultures. 
Third, uh, these cells typically will not come from the patient with MS themselves. Uh, so uh, treatment with uh, these cells will require immunosuppression uh, uh, as, if, as, as for a transplant to, to prevent rejection. Uh, and then finally, these cells do not have the ability to get into the brain from the outside, uh, so they will require direct injection into the, the nervous system. So one alternative that's been that's received a, a great deal of attention is to use so-called induced pluripotent stem cells. In other words, creating stem cells from adult cells. So in this approach, uh, cells are, are uh, obtained from an adult, for example, from a skin biopsy, uh, and then using a series of genetic reprogramming approaches turned into stem cells, which then can be further manipulated to uh, generate uh, more mature cells of interest. These cells are already being used uh, to try to discern uh, the cause of diseases such as multiple sclerosis uh, as the, uh, the basis for diagnostic methods uh, and to discover uh, treatments. But there's been a great deal of interest also in using these uh, as therapeutics in regenerative medicine. I should say, however, that this approach is still uh, a fairly long way away from being uh, uh, appropriate for general uh, use. So an alternative uh, is shown here. This is using one type of stem cell, so-called adult mesenchymal stem cells, to promote, to promote repair by stimulating the uh, oligodendrocyte progenitor stem cells that are already present within the nervous system of someone with MS. So why would we want to use these cells to do that? Well, that's because they have uh, a range of, of properties that, that suggest they would be helpful in this regard. First of all, they have very prominent uh, ability to migrate uh, not only within uh, damaged tissues, but also from the blood into those tissues. So they could be administered uh, either by intravenous injection or by spinal tap. In second, they, ha they have the ability to develop into a, a number of, of tissues of the body, including bone, uh, uh, cartilage, uh, muscle. Uh, so that's probably not going to be very helpful in multiple sclerosis. Uh, but they do have uh, a couple of other properties that, that would be useful in MS. First of all, they, are, they have very prominent immune effects. So uh, they inhibit several uh, deleterious aspects of the immune system uh, in multiple sclerosis. And they have the ability to, to produce a wide range of supporting factors, which uh, may help the stem cells already present within the nervous system. Uh, and then finally, uh, they have the ability to stimulate the formation of, of new blood vessels. And there's, there are some emerging theories that uh, one of the processes that may contribute to progressive MS is uh, insufficient uh, uh, blood supply. So these cells have been tested in multiple sclerosis with promising results. However, a number of, of important uh, issues have arisen concerning uh, practical aspects of uh, cell production and delivery. First of all, it's unclear where the, the best source of these cells is. They can be isolated from the bone marrow, uh, from fat tissue, uh, or from umbilical cord blood. Uh, and it's not clear which of those types of mesenchymal stem cells work the best. A related important question is whether the cells should be taken from, taken from the person with multiple sclerosis themselves uh, or from someone who does not have multiple sclerosis. Uh, and then there are a number of uh, very uh, important technical uh, issues. Uh, what's the best way to culture these cells to make them the most beneficial? Whether they can be frozen and then thawed uh, just before transplantation, which is more convenient, or whether they need to be taken directly from culture. Uh, how many cells do we need to inject? How often do we need to administer them? And then finally, what's the best route to administer them, either intravenously or by sp spinal tap or both? So all of these issues need to be worked out before these cells can be used more generally. There also are some, some safety considerations. Fortunately, uh, in most of the studies of these cells, uh, uh, they've been very well tolerated. Uh, and no uh, safety issues have uh, arisen, but there have been some safety concerns. First of all, at the time of in infusion, uh, these cells can clump together and 
uh, clog up uh, blood vessels. Some people have been allergic uh, to the uh, uh, administration. Uh, and then finally, when the cells are given by uh, spinal tap, some, some patients have developed what's called aseptic meningitis, which is irritation of the, the lining of the brain. As with any cell product, uh, infection is a concern. Uh, that's why uh, meticulous uh, techniques need to be uh, pursued so that the cell product is not contaminated. Uh, and because these cells have uh, uh, some immune effects, there is concern that they may cause immunosuppression. Uh, and then finally, as with any stem cell, there is concern of the uh, ability for them to form abnormal tissue or to turn into cancer cells. Thankfully, uh, that's been very uncommon, but there have been a few cancers that have arisen from mesenchymal stem cell uh, administration. So in summary, uh, there are several uh, approaches to cell-based therapies that are under investigation in multiple sclerosis, each with different purposes and risks. Some of these approaches show great promise, uh, but there still are significant details that need to be clarified. So as a result, uh, stem cell transplantation is not yet ready for general use to treat multiple sclerosis. For more information, uh, please visit the websites of the National MS Society and the International Association for Stem Cell Research.